Hi, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Beckerman is going to be in here in uh, just a couple minutes. Um, and so you can uh, choose to write a question in the um, in the chat, which is here on our right hand side. Um, we may do a poll, but we're going to wait and see. But you can just drop it in the chat or there's a Q&A, either one you want. Um, and welcome. Thanks for coming today. The first event of the fall and uh, as Tracy said, it's all being recorded. So if that is uh, cool with you, and you want to be on camera, great. If not, it just means you can come back and watch the replay later. So that's awesome. All right. And we're excited to hear about boosting our immunity. You know, all these kids, they, they can go to school and bring home some germs. So we, we want to be careful about that. Um, hi, Dr. Bergman. How are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I see here, this is, um, is this a screen share? A I little, think a little, little yes. Okay, yes. I, I did make a presentation, so I'll use that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Well, so I'm gonna let you get started and I will get off the screen, but I'll um I'll jump in uh, as needed. If not, then I won't. Okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. Perfect, all right, well, thank you. Okay, oh, and you see you have a chat area and a Q&A. Um, whoopsie, yes. that was our little timer and we're ready. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you go. All right, and I'll check um, the chat and the Q&A probably at the end, right, as Great. I go. Yeah. Great, okay. Bye. Thank you. Sure. All right, so I am going to share my screen because I, created a presentation for this. And what I'm gonna do is, I just wanna make sure you guys can hear me. Zach, can you hear me? Perfect. Okay, great, all right. All right, I'll go back to the full screen then. All right, so what I am going to do and cover today is how to boost up your family's immune system using food, herbs, and essential oils. Um, this is really important to me because uh, I have my daughter who's nine, and again, as we get into the fall, we really want to boost up everything we can do to fortify our immune systems. So a little quick background. I am a doctor of Chinese medicine. I focus a lot on cellular detox, so I'm very much into removing certain either pathogens, bacteria, viruses, and um, other toxins like mold and environmental toxins that can kind of throw off the immune system and also just people that have chronic issues. But this spills over into family health because, as you know, the whole family often gets comes down with something when one person gets sick. So it's really about kind of fortifying everyone's system. I have been an acupuncturist and I've treated over 50,000 people. So a lot of clients and patients in my, uh, let's see, 10 plus years as an acupuncturist. But I love treating families and working with kids just because there's so many things that you can do that are natural and safe. And so I like to focus on those as well. I do use a lot of essential oils with my practice and with my clients. So one thing that is a little bit different, the way I use them is to apply Chinese medicine philosophy to how we use the oils. So this happens to be a, with a lot of reducing stress by supporting certain organs and especially supporting the lungs, which are really crucial right now to make sure that they're functioning well and, um, and again, just fortifying your immune system. So overall, essential oils can calm down the nervous system, help with digestion and reduce stress. So people forget that when you're really, really stressed, it actually lowers your immune system. So this is a very unique time that we're living in right now. And a lot of people are watching a lot of news. They have a lot of fearful information that they're looking at and consuming on a regular basis. So it's actually really, really important to try to, if you can, distance yourself from that or especially be very mindful of what your kids are seeing and um, how they're reacting. So one thing that people don't realize is there's something called neuropsychoimmunology. 
And this is basically the science of how when you see something either stressful or traumatic that you've either watched in a movie or read on the news, it actually lowers your immune system. So again, it's really, really important to kind of be mindful of what you're doing and especially what your kids see. A lot of things aren't really filtered for young children and aren't really age appropriate, but even for adults, they're very stressful. So what we wanna do is make sure to try to reduce some stress as much as you can. This is really important. It's a great time to get outside, exercise with the family, get the natural vitamin D that you can get from the sun. Not everybody is the best at absorbing vitamin D from the sun. There's a spe specific gene where there are certain people that just don't absorb it very well. So I still do think it's important to actually supplement with vitamin D. That's one of the biggest vitamins. It's actually a pro-hormone and it's used in over 200 genetic processes. So really, really crucial, so easy to give kids. Um, you know, they have vitamin D drops even for infants and they have very easy ways for little kids to get them in as well as adults. So another really big part of boosting the immune system is knowing about your gut and your digestive health. So 80% of your immune system is located in your gut. So this is another reason why having really, really good gut health is actually imperative for fighting off colds, viruses, and bacterial infections. So if your kids are old enough, it's essential oils are a really great way to do this. You can use a diffuser, and I'll go over this, or you can, you know, there are some that are fine topical for older children when they're diluted, and then for adults as well. But there are a few other things that have a really, really big impact on the immune system. And one of the biggest is sugar. You know, nobody really wants to hear about trying to remove sugar out of your diet, but it is probably the biggest factor for decreasing your immune system. And, you know, there are lots of really wonderful natural sugars like raw honey or, you know, not if you need your kids to be a little bit older, but the raw honey and bee pollen can be really good and really, really beneficial to boost up your immune system. But we'll go over those a little bit more. So back to essential oils, there are a lot of different types of qualities. So there are certain oil brands I love. Um, you know, there's very popular ones like doTERRA and Young Living. But again, I also love them from Mountain Rose Organics. That's a really wonderful company. Um, and there are some really nice ones out there. I use another line called Snow Lotus as well. And you really want them to be free from chemicals because you don't want something that's extra concentrated to be filled with pesticides and chemicals. And that's mostly what you might get at, um, at, like, at the health food store. So make sure it's an organic essential oil if that's possible for that specific product. So there are different ways that you can use this and this is very pertinent with your family, right? So there are topical applications and you're always gonna wanna dilute them, especially if you're dealing with using oils for the family. So there are different ways that you would dilute them if you have a little, little one or if you're basically using this for a toddler or versus an adult. But one of the easiest ways is to kind of make a roller that is pretty diluted. And I have another slide that has some dilutions on there. But one of the safest ways that you can do is just use them in a diffuser and or in a bath. Bath is really great for your little ones. And you can basically want to make sure that you use a little like a drop of it in basically some bath gel or on salts and then put that in the bath. So, again, it depends on the age, age of your children. There's specific ages that are better for certain oils. And then some of the oils actually, you just have to be mindful if you're going into the sun and you have put them on topically. So I use my diffuser all the time. We always have it running. Um, but again, my daughter is nine, but we have been using this since she was little. And uh, another great way is I had a humidifier for when she was sick and it had a little spot for some essential oils as well. So you can diffuse them at bedtime for stress reduction, um, helping little ones sleep and for immune boosting. One thing that's really also crucial, as most people know, and it's not the easiest, is sleep is a really big factor that has to be addressed. If, the, if kids are having sleep issues or adults, that will definitely impact the immune system. So 
I know that, again, there's a lot of underlying stress right now. So finding ways that the family as a whole or each individual that might be having some issues can find some stress reduction techniques. So again, so oils can be great for that. Having a really good sleep routine is crucial. And again, making sure to avoid certain things that might be disrupting sleep, like if there's screen time a little too close to bed, things like that. So another practice that I used to have and actually still do a bit is using a little bit of essential oils, again, diluted in a roller, um, something like this. I just make them, but you can buy them. Most of the companies will make them. And they also make some very specific kid-friendly ones that are diluted for children. And you can use these on specific acupuncture points or just on the wrist, um, bottom of the feet. And they're really, really great for reducing stress and anxiety for kids. And then again, also specifically for nourishing the lung. And um, if anyone has some phlegm or sinus congestion, there are specific oils for that as, as well. We also use an app called Insight Timer, which is really great for meditation and for going to bed and making it easy for kids. They have wonderful options for all ages. So this is a really nice little blending table. So it has basically the amount of either oil, lotion, bath oil, shower gel, and then you can put a drop or two of some specific oils. And I'm gonna go over some of my favorites. So this is, these are two very popular blends that people use. Again, um, they would really need to be diluted or you can, they have um, sanitizing spray and also just rollers. So this is a blend of cloves, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. Um, the two major ones, I guess, that very common that people use, one is called On Guard and one is called Thieves. But they basically have a really nice combination of these antibacterial and antiviral oils. Black spruce is one of my favorite essential oils that is used for sinus congestion and it strengthens the lungs and is really great for coughing and wheezing. And this is actually really good for boosting up the immune system and reducing stress. So I've added on here some places that I put oils, but again, that's sort of a little bit deeper and anyone's welcome to email me or if they have any questions or um, I can explain things a little bit further, but this is sort of just a little bit of an intro. Another really amazing one that is for um, phlegm and coughing and wheezing and also just strengthening the spirit is frankincense. And this is a really, really wonderful oil and can be used in a roller as well, diluted. Ginger, this is a really great one, amazing for the immune system. It's very warming, so this is especially used when kids catch cold or if they tend to have more of the kind of white phlegm or clear phlegm. So this is more of a warming herb and it's really great. This is also one that you can slice up uh, with a little bit of lemon and depending on if your child is old enough or not, have a little bit of honey and you can make a really nice healing tonic that the kids and parents can drink to kind of boost up the system, and again, if you have a little bit of a cold to help resolve that. Lavender, everyone knows this is a, just a very calming oil. It actually does help with coughs and nourishing the lungs, but again, it's really, really great for anxiety and stress. So this is, again, one of my favorites, especially um, if you diffuse it at night, really wonderful. So now we're gonna go over some of the top foods for boosting the immune system. And I'll also include another slide that has more in detail, but overall, some of my favorites are avocado. Berries are really wonderful because they have a lot of different pigments in them, so they have a lot of different vitamins. The cruciferous vegetables, really, really good. Leafy greens are often high in vitamin C. And then other brightly colored foods, such as bell peppers, strawberries, um, and even eggplant, they have a lot of different usually a lot of different vitamins, but mostly it's vitamin C and antioxidants, which really help support the immune system. So we wanna decrease caffeine. This is for the adults. Often people have a little, little bit too much caffeine in the day or a lot, and they're relying on that for energy. Sugar for adults and kids is the number one 
thing that I would remove that has the biggest effect on lowering your immune system. So conventional dairy, there are a lot of people that have issues with creating too much phlegm and congestion when they have dairy, but adding on the fact that if it's traditional dairy means that it's not grass fed or it's, it has hormones, this has other effects that will also negatively impact your immune system. Alcohol, again, for the adults, if you've gotten into the habit of having alcohol, it actually will very much lower your immune system. So it's really great to cut that out. And if you're not going to cut it out, at least I tell people maybe limit to either the weekends or just one night a week. And conventional meat. So grass fed meat has a lot of really great properties. But if you're eating kind of traditional factory farmed meat, that definitely will create a, a bit of a dip for your immune system. And so these are a little bit more in depth on specific things and supple not supplements, but properties of foods and that actually have a really good impact in different ways. So foods that are high in lysine, lysine helps against viruses. So apples, apricots, avocado, beet, fig, mango, tomato, papaya. Again, there's a bit of overlap with these and the ones that are high in vitamin C, but the, there's a difference with some of the oranges, papayas, blueberries, bell peppers. Um, also leafy greens, these, like, these have a lot of vitamin C, so that's really good. Cruciferous vegetables, also really, really healthy for you. And then zinc is another property that basically it's really great and helps with the immune system and immunity and usually lessens the length and severity of colds and viruses. So foods that are high in zinc are seafood, pumpkin seeds, sea vegetables, and beans, lentils, and legumes. Again, if you have sensitivities to any of these or if your kids do, then it's important to cut them out. One thing that's also very important, which I did touch upon, is it's really, really crucial to choose grass-fed or, or anti sorry, antibiotic and hormone-free meat. And again, sugar. It's really, really a challenge to get it out, but it would be the most impactful thing that you could do. I tell people what is really good to do is if you're eating anything packaged or especially for your kids and there's a label on it, so please look and see if there's anything that has 10 grams of sugar or more, it's way too much to have in one serving. And so what I tell clients to do is either cut the serving in half or better yet, choose something else. So it's really, really important because there's just so much refined sugar and people have so much and they don't really realize it. So a lot of the things, even for children that are packaged as low sugar, if you take a look at it, they still can have over 10 or 15 grams of sugar in one serving. And that's just way too much for their little bodies. It's way too much for an adult as well. So an, an, a way to help balance this is to make sure that you and your kids are getting enough healthy fats. So nuts, seeds, avocados, um, coconut, if you're okay with grass-fed butter, these are all really great things that help nourish your body and support it so that you don't have those highs and lows from blood sugar being out of balance. And again, some of that is picking the right oils. You know, we really want to make sure and avoid any of the seed oils and any of the unhealthy oils that basically get a little bit rancid by just picking the wrong ones. So if you're going to use olive oil, really wonderful, but ideally don't cook with it. And um, coconut is great for high fat, I'm sorry, high heat and avocado oil also great for high heat and cooking. So some of my favorite sup supplements for immune boosting, vitamin D, you know, this starts anywhere from infants to adults, so really crucial to make this a part of your routine. Vitamin C, this here, this is one of my favorite brands. It's called Symbiotica. Um, I do carry this in my office and ship this to families. I use this combination of this vitamin C and liposomal elderberry with zinc and echinacea. So these are really great. These are safe for anyone over the age of two. So I love this. This is kind of what I have all my clients on in preparation for going back to school or even just, you know, for the fall and for the flu season that's coming up. 
I do love this company called Beekeepers. They have really great honey and then they make a throat spray that's honey and propolis. So you can kind of spray that. Um, again, if you're age two and up, you can spray that and use that um, as a preventative. So really, really great if you're going in and if you're around a lot of people. And there are certain probiotics that are especially beneficial for immune boosting. But again, this goes back to gut health and you kind of want to make sure you're taking the right probiotic because just giving somebody probiotics doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good thing. Um, if they have some sort of gut imbalances that might potentially make it a little bit worse. So there are more things that you can take. These are just kind of the basics. Um, and a lot of times people want to know, you know, the most important things. And I would say definitely reducing your sugar consumption. And then again, implementing. So this is my favorite, the, the Synergy C and liposomal elderberry. People always ask, what are the brands I like? So I use this one, Symbiotica. Mary Ruth Organics is one that people use. There is another one that's really great. Um, I use Designs for Health. And I use some drops from a company called Cellcore Cell for oxygen and for immune boosting. They have an immune tonic. And let's see what else. Oh, I do use a lot of homeopathics in my practice. and some of the brands I love are called Boron and Genexa. So Genexa is a really great line that makes clean products such as cough syrup and they even have an acetaminophen but without all the fillers and the dyes. So again, it's really important. My practice is filled often with a lot of clients that are really trying to avoid toxins and chemicals. And so this spills even into the medications that people are taking, um, as well as, you know, the personal care products and all of those have a big impact on health. So I do have an immune boosting snack guide. You guys are welcome to download it or I can see about adding it to, um, to, to the chat or wh whatever works best, but happy to help anyone if they're kind of just getting started. And, you know, everything is a bit specific toward the age of your kids as well, because you can't, you know, nothing, there aren't things that are safe for all ages necessarily. I do use homeopath, homeopathics a lot for this reason. Um, but again, it really depends on the individual and the age of the kids. So that's kind of all I have. And I wanted to open it up for any questions anybody might have. Uh, let's see if we have anything. Let's see. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes. Yes. Hi, sorry. I just wanted to jump in and say that was awesome. And yes, you know, uh, you've already taken care of that. Uh, when you get a chance, do drop in your um, information in the chat. So okay. Sure. Can, um, you know, connect with you, just find your website, wherever the download is, all that. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's right on the homepage. So it's very okay. easy because, you know, as right now, immunity is so crucial, right? I feel um, like it's a, it's a really big thing, even if you're not around, you know, if you're not going back to school, even this is the season. In Chinese medicine, we talk about, you know, you have to fortify your system to prepare for the fall and for the flu season and, and whatnot, everything that's going around. So right. very important. But again, most people don't want to cut out sugar or limit it. But again, it's it's it'll be the best for you. Right. Well, I so I'll jump in real quick on that one, because I know um, you kind of said there's a way to sort of mitigate it, like if you, um, you know, add in other things into your diet and it maybe helps a little or oh yeah okay yes so for people that do eat you know some sweeter things or you know kids obviously love fruit and they love all of the sweet treats and snacks and things right and unfortunately it is really kind of marketed toward them and their the products are sweet so what we want to do is make sure they're really, as long as there, you know, there aren't any sensitivities or allergies, but really great quality nuts and fats are really important to help balance that. So if somebody does make a snack for your kids, 
And I always say this, it's like, you know, if you're going to give them apples, then ideally pair it with a sun butter or a nut butter of some sort, or even just a handful of nuts. So again, the sun butter seems to be nut friendly, you know, and coconut butter is another one that's really delicious that people kind of forget about. And I, you know, that's a big thing. If they can eat dairy or, you know, some pieces of grass fed cheese are great with it. Because that's the thing is kids tend to just gobble up so much fruit, which has a lot of great benefits, but we need to kind of balance it and pair it with something. So it just doesn't go straight to their bloodstream and just sugar. Sure, sure. So yeah, so like uh, the cheese and apple slices together as a snack. That's a that's mm -hmm. a great idea. Okay, awesome. Um, there is there's um so Julia has asked in the chat yeah. um to please let them know where to buy those products you mentioned. Okay. That's basically that yes. spray. I want that too. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, I can. Um, I can send. I have all of these, or I can send you a link. Right. Okay. So if yeah. anyone has any questions on anything, they can email me and I'll put that in the chat yeah that's and great. also my website um has the download for the immune boosting snacks and it has some smoothie recipes as well perfect um and then sandra and christine both have a couple of questions there i don't know if you can see those uh yes so baby who doesn't sleep very well and so again since you have a seven month old i would stick to diffusing right it's just the safer thing to do and lavender is usually the best thing to use. Lavender, and again, um, kind of depends on why the baby's not sleeping, right? Again, you probably can't tell as much. Um, sometimes too, they get a little bit of digestive issues. So I do love citrus as well, kind of grapefruit and lavender are really nice. Grapefruit can be a little, um, energizing so maybe that is better in the day but the lavender is very calm for the evening and that's one of my favorites and let me see what else basically um i i carry in my office the vitamin c and elderberry i can send a link for the the beekeepers i think i have a discount code for them as well and for my clients i do um, most of the products, I give a discount. Um, and I have actually a dispensary on Fullscript, which is an online dispensary. And if anyone wants to contact me for that, you can email me or it's actually on my website too. Basically, there are some of my favorite immune boosting products in the store already. Let's see what else. Um, how to boost baby's gut flora. So another one is... so. Let's see, five months, is your, is your baby eating some of the solid foods as well? And are they on, still getting breast milk or are they on a formula? There are basically, there are infant probiotics. So I would look into that. Um, I can give, well, not look into it. I can give you the names of some. Some of the companies I love make them and I'm happy to send you a link. You can email me, um, but let's see, five months old. So yeah, basically you could put this into either water or their bottle if, if they're having breast milk still or if they're taking formula. Some of, the, some of them too, you can open up and you could put on a little bit of food if they're doing some, you know, like mashed sweet potato or avocado, things like that. But generally the, the, the little ones do respond pretty well to the probiotics. But they do make a, an infant specific. So I would do that. Another thing is also just um, be, this is something that I learned when I was pregnant. I don't know if, or I know this happens to other people, if you're still nursing and the adult or the mom has food sensitivities, it's really important to make sure that you're eating kind of as clean as you can and avoiding those sensitivities because even the histamine reaction that occurs in the body of the mom can have an effect on the child. So the child might not have the sensitivity to the food as much, but the reaction and the histamine response is in the breast milk and can create an issue for the kids, like rashes or um, gut disturbances. So I found that out. A lot of times the adults aren't very great um, at, also if you have any issues, some of the cruciferous can create a lot of issues for the little ones. Okay, so the products mentioned, 
I use a couple, so I use a liposomal vitamin C and a liposomal elderberry by a company called Symbiotica. And again, I, I just have these in my office and ship them out to people. I use infant probiotics from a company called Designs for Health or Metagenics, or I have one from another company called Cellcore. Again, the cell core is not made for infants, but you can just have a smaller dose, but the other two make specific infant probiotics. And you, yeah, you could mix that into his, the, I would put it in the breast milk just because that's extra amazing for your little one. And what other pro products? So the beekeepers would be too young for him, but it would be fine for you. They make a raw honey bee pollen and then they make a propolis throat spray. So really, really good. And let's see what else. I use vitamin D. I have companies, there's various companies that use, that have infant drops. So for the little, little ones, all the way to toddlers and adults. I use Mary Ruth Organics. That's a very popular and widely found um, kids line. And Nordic Naturals is another one. They make, but they make a lot of gummies. So again, then you run into some issues with the sugar in the teeth. So we don't want that. But again, it's, it can be a little tricky just getting the things into the kids. So one thing I like about the liposomals, so that means it's kind of like this emulsified, um, it's, not, it's not a tincture, it's kind of as oil, but its delivery is way more absorbable. So you can put that in water, smoothie, or um, like if they have any yogurt or any sort of like applesauce, things like that. That's where I usually put that. And very easy for the kids for the kids to take then. Let me see. I think we're almost basically out of time. Does anybody have any other questions? I had a couple. Sure. Um, so I know. So one thing you said, um, zinc. Uh, great to get zinc out of your foods, and and you mentioned a few things. Um, mm -hmm. When you say sea vegetables, oh what yeah, do you mean by that? What is what's um, so? Okay, so some people use powdered dulse, which I would say doesn't taste very good, um, but using, you know, seaweed. So actually one of my very good friends is the owner of Sea Snacks, which is the really popular, right, seaweed. And that's amazing for kids. It has so many great benefits and they make it in a lot of different forms. So that's what I would suggest and that's the easiest. So that's like the nori sheets, right? Yes, yeah. The, and they make the little ones. They have lime flavor, which is really good. Um, and then they make a lot of different ones, right? But kids seem to enjoy the plain, a lot of them. So yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. crunchy, right? Yeah. That yeah. crunchy, salty. Yeah, love that. Um, and then oils. You said mm -hmm. you know they can get um, uh, what's the word old, right? And so we can you store them in the fridge? Does that help? You mean cooking oils? Essential yeah. oils are fine. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Cooking oils, you said, can get rancid, right? And we want to... Oh, sorry. Actually, they can get rancid by cooking them at the wrong temperature. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, so olive oil, for example, is not is more like to drizzle on and use after you've cooked something or for salad dressing. Um, but avocado and coconut and you know ghee or butter are the ones to use when you're sauteing or cooking at a high heat. Got it. Okay. So it wasn't about storage. Never no. mind. Okay. Um, all right. So there's a couple more um, questions. Uh, the bee pollen, what is it good for? And then the baby probiotic products. Sure. I wondered if you want to put it in the chat or if you want people to email you. Well, if they email me, I can just send them the link, which is easier. I use, um, again, so for baby products, there's, sorry, baby probiotics. There's Genexa, Designs for Health, um, and Metagenics. But again, I, I can email you. I have you know a dispensary, and then I, I always pass along a discount, and a lot of the products are there. And so beekeepers, the bee pollen I love as an immune booster and for people that if they have allergies. So ideally, you're getting it local, so it's not as beneficial for allergies if you're not if it's not your local bees 
but it still really helps. It's a really potent superfood. And my daughter's been having bee pollen since she was little. Um, I knew she didn't have a bee allergy. So that is something you just need to make sure your kids don't have a bee allergy before kind of consuming any of the propolis or the, the propolis throat spray or the bee pollen. Did you have a question for me? I think your mic is off. Griselda, if you have a question, you can unmute and ask. Um, in the meantime, we do have a couple more clarifying questions about sure. the bee pollen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Would you mind? Let's see. The bee so pollen. Um, is someone, uh, Brittany was just saying again, curious about the bee pollen and then how young can bee pollen be used from Sharon? And then Brittany saying, so bee pollen is not safe for someone with a bee allergy, just to yeah. clarify. Yeah. So um, if someone has a bee allergy, always ideal to stay away just potentially from bee pollen or propolis or royal jelly, just any of the bee products. Um, and then I would probably even do that with raw honey because that has some particles and bits just, just to be extra safe because usually people have a big reaction. So I would, let's see here, bee pollen again. It's, so it's one of my favorite sort of superfoods. It has a lot of, I don't remember the exact different, all the vitamins and nutrients in it, but it's really great if the kids love it because you can just, you take a little spoonful and I would say anyone over the age of two but again, with bee pollen, because it has little granules, just start with a couple and see if your child likes it. And then if they do, then you can add it a little bit more. Okay. So uh, so, so Sharon's question, how young? Uh, two. Two years old. Got it. But again, with any, any sort of even food or something that's potentially very concentrated, it has little granules, just try a couple first, make sure you're all good. Um, most people don't know that they have sensitivity to bees necessarily, right? And some kids are more and more sensitive these days. So just because the adult doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that your, your kids are totally fine. But I would, you know, it's always just good to be careful. Great, great. Got it, okay, great. Um, okay, so uh, Griselda, we just wanna see if you want to ask a question. Uh, you can unmute and do that. And we're almost out of time for this session. Um, can we unmute you? No, we can't. I think that's on you. Let me see. Let me try. Nope. I think that you have to do that part. Okay. Well, anyway, so um, again, for just a little housekeeping that we do have a another session with um, uh, Molly Pross and Hila Bahari starting those sessions start at 12. Um, and then there's another session with Deanie Klein from Prep and Rally at 1230, just to let everyone know. Um, and Dr. Ashley, I'm going to, I'm going to jump out and let you uh, wrap up. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. So if, if anybody has any questions, you can visit my website, uh, www.drashley.com. And my email is on there as well. You can email me any questions. And again, if you want to download the top immunity snacks, I have that right on my homepage. And the same, if you would like access to some of the products I was talking about, you can send me an email. And I'm happy to share with you too my favorite oils and any of the products that I use. Again, most of the time I just ship them out, but I do have some pharmacies where I have quite a few options already loaded in there for immunity and especially for kids immunity too. So any questions you might have, feel free to ask and I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Before you go, sorry, I see that Griselda has asked in the Q&A, and I'm so sorry. So okay. um, we could not make it work in the live chat. But um, can foods be introduced early to see if a baby is allergic? You mean earlier? So then, like, I know that 
we the, on the very very early side was three months but they i think they often suggest more like on the six month range i think it depends on the person as well and i would i would say also the situation of the mom right if she's able to breastfeed longer then that's also always amazing and wonderful if you like for myself i went back to work very early so my daughter got solid foods earlier but i stuck to avocado sweet potato and mix them with breast milk. So there's there's a definite way. And then I think that there's probably someone maybe in this group that talks, has a lecture specifically on that, right? About the first 1000 days and nutrition. So I would say that's probably even the better place to, to dive into that. But I did, I stuck with the most nutrient dense. So I stuck with avocado and sweet potato. And that's kind of a Chinese medicine um, way we do it too of nourishing the digest digestive system and good fats. Got Is it. that helpful? <laughs> yeah, please. Um, you can also, you'll be able to check out the replay um, within, I think, an hour. Um, and the, so that's um, Dr. Katie Thompson, or Katie Thompson, uh, registered dietitian. You can uh, see her replay and um, and then uh, too at Prep and Rally at 12, 1230. Uh, Brittany has another question. What do you think of mom taking very strong probiotics during pregnancy? And then that'll be our last question. Sure. So again, not enough information for me to make an educated opinion. Um, the type of probiotics actually makes a big difference. You, like I said, you can kind of feed bacteria that's there by taking one that's not really the best for your system. Not, it's not a good idea just to take a lot of probiotics um, that actually can cause some other issues. But then again, most people do have a lot of gut issues going on. So I would say, and it depends on what conditions the mom has and why she's taking them, right? If she had to take antibiotics, then yes, really good to try to re, um, recolonize the gut and things like that with good probiotics. But again, without knowing the actual situation, it's hard for me to tell, but you're welcome to email me and, and then I can give you a little bit of a more specific answer to what the situation was. But yeah, just taking antibiotics um, isn't always the best thing. We want everything, I'm big on customizing to the person. So very important to do that because we're all unique and different and have different needs. Right, got it. Okay. So yes, again, a little housekeeping. Um, thank you, Kara, for asking this question. So there are two sessions at a time. So right now we've been with Dr. Ashley and there's also been Katie Thompson from Square Baby talking. Um, and then um, the at 12 o'clock, any minute now, uh, we're going to hop over and do two sessions with um, Molly Pross and uh, Hila Bahari. And then at 1230, just one, there's be just one session at that point. So Anyway, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to hop off and um, and uh, go get started on the next one. And thank you, Dr. Ashley. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Nice. And you'll always be able to see the replays. So the event will be up for um, another day, two days, maybe even total. So you can come back later and watch the replay. Great. Bye. Thank you.